Alright guys, <laughs> it feels good. It is finally time to start hunting whitetails. I could not be more excited. I am oh, in a rush big time. I am heading almost four hours down to Tennessee to some public land to meet up with my good buddy Jacob Myers with the Southern Outdoorsman. It is the weekend of the early season Tennessee velvet hunt. And uh, about two weeks ago I got a little insights on some uh, new info that they dropped it open to some public land uh, and it's also muzzleloader and bow so I'm uh, wearing this Matthews hat for no reason right now because the only thing I've got in this truck is the old muzzleloader somewhere back there the bed of the truck is loaded down with gear uh, looks like we're gonna camp or camp in the truck and I should be getting down there with a little bit of time to glass some fields try to catch a velvet buck come into some crop uh, it's supposed to be raining when I get there, so fingers crossed that even if it is raining, I can get eyes on a on a buck for tomorrow morning, tomorrow afternoon, and hopefully two of them. Because the goal is to uh, both of us to fill a tag. And uh, the reason they've opened this uh, velvet hunt to muzzleloader and to some of the public ground is because it's in a CWD zone, uh, chronic wasting disease, and apparently it's been detected in a couple counties down here. And uh, they're wanting pretty much the deer wiped out, which sucks for the residents. But as a non-resident with a 300 something dollar tag, we're gonna jump on these opportunities every chance we get. So hopefully, uh, hopefully something happens. I'm Stuff to tell. God, it scared me. Woo, did it scare me? Well, I've drove to four different spots and I've glassed and glassed and glassed and uh, I ain't seen the first deer driving around. I ain't seen the first deer through the binoculars. It's just tough. And there's only a certain spot I can't see and it's just way back over that tree line. I mean, there's deer tracks around here everywhere, so there's deer in the area. I just wonder if they're already so pressured by these roads and this public access that they're kind of tucked away back in there and they're hitting these crops till well after dark. I don't know. Might be a surprise tomorrow. We'll see. All right, guys, it is chaos. Get everything together. Over here. Mr. Jacob Myers spraying himself down with cancer causing permethrin mm. and uh, did a little scouting this afternoon didn't see any deer uh, but high hopes for in the morning it's going to be raining he likes it I don't uh, but at least uh, we're going to be hunting tomorrow and 90% of the people aren't which makes it a good day alright guys you can see all the essentials I have forgotten so much stuff at the house I left my bullets at the house I have one shot of powder. Jacob's going to help me out with that. Uh, packing in some food, some cliff bars, because I'm not sure if we're going to come out tomorrow. A couple Gatorades, first aid kit, and just kind of packing up this bigger pack that I have because I'm taking so much stuff in with, you, with me tomorrow. I'll be hunting out of a saddle for the first time. That's exciting. And uh, hopefully we get some sleep. Oh, look, he, he found he found a bag here. Please, sir, may I have some more? Yeah, you sure can. <laughs> Got these uh, snack sticks I had made out of a dough last year. Super expensive, super tasty. All right, guys, it was a little more comfy than I thought. Honestly, I slept pretty good. Did you sleep good? Oh, yeah. We're going to do it. See the nice facilities, the hotel we stayed at last night. Anyways, it feels awesome wearing yeah. orange. Oh, the yeah. first time of the year, it doesn't even bother me. No, and this hat looks that much redder, too. It does. So bad. Anyways, it's uh, 4 a.m., heading to the spot, and uh, I've been told not to disclose this, this spot. 
I'm bad about that apparently. Oh yeah. <laughs> Jacob's light, and uh, he's cutting off towards this crop field. I'm gonna take a trail and go further back onto the back end of this uh, field. There's a levee with trees that separate it, so I'm gonna be able to watch one half of the field, and he's gonna watch the other and uh, kind of climb up about 10 or 15 feet inside the woods, catch these velvet bucks coming back uh, to bed. Hopefully, they're in the fields, we're in here super early. There's nobody here. Uh, just gonna take this trail all the way to the back corner of this field. Didn't see any other deer for the day, unfortunately. But a uh, ton of sign, just a ton of freaking tracks. Absolutely ton of tracks. So we're gonna try to get up a game plan to either decide whether or not we want to come back out in this area and hunt again, or if we want to try something different. Um, not terribly sure quite yet what we want to do. Not terribly sure. Hold on, hold on. I'm not used to having it on me. I'm used to doing it myself, so I feel awkward. As long as I've been doing this, I should be a professional by now. But I just, Come on, Michael Waldell. I'm a rookie, man. Well, I'll tell you what. That other place, I knew it wasn't going to be worth crap when I started seeing Bigfoot tracks everywhere. <laughs> no, I'm not kidding, dude. I was walking with my headlamp. I looked down. I was like, that is not a foot track. That is a footprint. There are five toes. That sucker was that long. I got a picture of it. I'll show you. It's all here. So we ditched the old river bottom and come over here and found the old soybeans on the public land. We're gonna one here in about five hours after we take a nap. Yeah. Get some more Popeyes maybe. Oh Jesus, no. God no. <laughs> oh man. Yeah, I had to go through some toilet paper sun out there. Oh yeah, dude. I was I couldn't get my I was like, oh my god, I gotta get back to the truck. I didn't bring no <laughs> toilet paper and it hit me. I was like, oh, I have my kill kit. For elk and I got out and I got my game bags out of the way. I was like, oh wipes to wipe my hand off after we get done. I was like, yes. Yep. Save the day. I look rough. Just took a nap in the truck right here all around the road. And uh, me and Jake found this area right here. You can see these beans behind me. It's new public ground we found. There's corn. It's a, this property is basically divided with corn and beans. And these beans are so tall, we're thinking maybe the deer are bedded in the beans. So I'm going to sneak down this creek and work my way to a stand location. I'm going to hunt with a saddle today some climbing sticks orange almost forgot my gun Let's get that out and uh, find a tree climb up it is gonna storm at 6 6 30 somewhere around in there I don't know if I'll come out then but I've got my rain jacket in here just in case but more than likely I'm gonna get soaked so I'll be filming this hunt with my phone that has a waterproof case on it and that'll probably be all I'm gonna take with me because I'm not taking a chance. So let me get dressed.
ease my way around this bean field. There's corn on the other side of this wood line. The wood line's only 30 yards wide, so I'm hoping these deer are bedded out in these beans laying down. Try to hurry up and get set up before they get up and start milling around. Storm coming in at 6.30. Probably get on their feet early today. This is so cool. Money Bag Myers <laughs> has introduced me to a new style of hunting called saddle hunting. And it's like, it's so comfortable, it's convenient, and it's the most mobile way to hunt. steps platform I'm probably 20 foot off this creek bed probably 15 foot off the ground of this bean field you see just a perfect setup but hopefully these deer get up and move about 4 30 before this storm gets here and one just comes cruising right down this bean field loader fun times in Tennessee That was fast. And he was, he was right there. I really hope I hit this deer. I feel like I hit this deer. He was all the way across the field, and I just seen him running this way. And he, he stops over here like a hundred yards and just looks up. And comes straight down the field, right in front of me. I couldn't ask for a better opportunity. These beans are so high. I couldn't even, like, I was aiming where I thought his vitals were. I hope this deer is dead within 100 yards over here. I'm going to give it 30 more minutes, and I'll climb down, walk out there, and see if I can find some blood. But when he ran off, I didn't see, I didn't see a hole in the side of him. That scares me. I ain't gonna lie, I was getting nervous because I just followed his tracks where he beat down the beans all the way out and I didn't find a single drop of blood. Until right here. <laughs> Guys, I think I just killed my second velvet buck ever. Thank you, God. Let's see. It looks like lung blood to me. And backtrack a little bit. Not, maybe it just took him a minute to start bleeding. That's nerve wracking. Yes. Yes. <laughs> oh my God. Thank you, God. Look at the flies on him. He's a lot better than I thought. My God, I've never seen so many horse flies. Look at this. Man. 
<laughs> what a buck. Oh, man. It's been a while since I felt the fuzz. Guys, you can see it's a pretty successful day. Jacob behind the camera, my good buddy, Mr. Myers, invited me down to hunt with him here in Tennessee on the uh, first ever public land velvet hunt. They opened up about 10 or 12 units this year to um, some public land because of the chronic wasting disease. And uh, we took advantage of it. Pretty sure I thought I missed this deer. Honest to God, I made a pretty good shot. He was dead 100 yards, super blessed. I mean, a lot of people probably wouldn't have shot this deer, but I would have. Um, it's not about that to me. It's about coming down with great company and just showing that anybody can do this. Like, you don't have to be great. You don't have to have tons of money. You can come and hunt public land and have opportunities just like this. And uh, I couldn't be more thankful. So. Hey guys, really long day, lots of miles covered. Oh, that man, the world back there, inviting me down for this hunt. It's uh, <laughs> it's been uh, a lot of fun, a lot of success, and uh, we got this deer boned out and quartered up, and I've got him on my pack. Let's see. He's trying to fall off. Oh, anyways, guys. Big thanks to Jacob. He's a lifesaver. Really appreciate the good companionship, help with this deer, and uh, somebody that just completely understands our each other's passions for hunting and especially public land. Couldn't ask for a better day. And until next time, you guys have a better than average day. You tickle.